In the previous lecture, we discussed the 0-1 knapsack problem. To solve it, our first solution was to traverse possible subsets of items with backtracking, then we optimized the solution with dynamic programming. But a question may have come to your mind. Instead of evaluating a lot of combinations, why don't we just keep taking the most profitable items until we have no more remaining capacity? The profitability of an item here can be measured with the ratio between its value and its weight. An item is interesting to take when it has high value or low weight, or both. So the solution that arises from your reflection is the greedy solution, who sort items by their ratio between value and weight in decreasing order, then we keep taking items from the sorted array until we have no more remaining capacity in the knapsack. Let's try to apply this strategy on our example. We have these five items. Let's calculate the ratio of each one of them. For the first one, 20 divided by 6 is 3.33. For the second one, it's 2.3. For the third one, it's 3. Then we have 2.5 for the fourth one and 3.33 for the last one. We saw them by ratio and we start putting in our knapsack. The most profitable item is the item 0. We add its value, 20, and we subtract 6 from remaining capacity. Next profitable item is the item 4 with the same ratio. We can take it, we add its value, 10, and we subtract its weight, 3. Next profitable item is the item 2. We add its value, 15, and we subtract its weight, 5. Next profitable item, the item 3. Its weight exceeds remaining capacity, we stop. And what total value did we get? We got $45. Is it the best value we could get? No, with our previous solution, we got 55. We did use that the greedy solution doesn't always give the optimal solution. The reason behind it is that sometimes the greedy algorithm fails to use the whole capacity a capacity that could be better exploited by taking items considered less profitable but that will still give a greater value by using that unused capacity by the greedy method. For example, here the greedy algorithm didn't use 6 kilograms, what a loss. Instead of taking the third item at the end, we could take the fourth one. It's considered less profitable because it has a smaller ratio, but it would still give a greater value thanks to those 6 kilograms we didn't use. The greedy solution doesn't work for the 0-1 knapsack problem, but it works for a variant of it, the fractional knapsack problem, the problem we will discuss today. The fractional knapsack problem follows the same concept. We have values and weights of n items, a knapsack of capacity k, and we're searching for the maximum value that we can get without exceeding the total weight of k. The difference is that in the 0-1 version, we can either take the whole item or not take it at all, but in this problem, we can take a fraction of an item. This is why xi is between 0 and 1 inclusive, not just 0 or 1. So xi can be 0, we don't take the item i at all, it can be 1, we take the whole item i, or it can be for example 0.3, it means that we take 30% of the item i. And obviously, when we take 30% of an item, we will get 30% of its value only. Okay, but why does the greedy solution work in this case? Because we don't have to worry about having a used capacity. We can always use it to take a fraction of the next profitable item. In the example, we calculated the ratio of each item, we sorted, we took the item 0, the item 4, the item 2, and we stopped at item 3, because 6 kilograms weren't enough to take it. But in the fractional knapsack problem, even if we cannot take the whole fourth item, but we can take a fraction of it. The weight of the item 3 is 10 kilograms, and we have only 6 kilograms left, so we take 60% of it. We add 60% of its value, 60% of 25 is 15, we get a total value of 60. And this is the optimal result. We can't find a combination with a value higher than 60 that fits. You can try if you want. Because we're using our capacity in a smart way. We're taking items that have a value per kilogram that is as high as possible. We keep doing this until we don't have enough capacity to take the next profitable item, 
we just take a fraction of it and we stop. Let's try to implement this. Items are identified with their index 0, 1, 2, etc. So we just make an array of n indices from 0 to n minus 1 inclusive. Now we sort them. We sort them according to their ratio. The ratio of an item i is its value, values of i, divided by its weight, weights of i. And we put reverse to true to get them in decreasing order. Now that we sorted them, we create a variable total value initialized to zero. It will be our output. We can start traversing sorted items now. For each item i, we first check if we have enough capacity to take the whole item. We write, if weights of i is smaller than or equal to k, k being the remaining capacity. If is the case, we can take the whole item. We take 100% of its value and subtract 100% of its weight. In other words, we add values of i to total value and we subtract weights of i from k. Else if we don't have enough capacity, it means that it's the last item we will take. We will take a fraction of it. To calculate xi, how much of it we can take, we divide remaining capacity by its weight. For example, earlier we had 6 remaining kilograms, and the weight of the item was 10, so we took 0.6, 60%. In code, xi is equal to k divided by weights of i. We said that we don't take the whole value of the item, we take depending on how much we took from the item. If we take 60% of the item, we take 60% of the value. This is why we add to the total value values of i multiplied by xi, xi being the fraction, it can be between 0 and 1. And we break the loop because now remaining capacity is 0, we know that we won't be able to take any new item. After the loop, we just return the total value we found. And this is the greedy solution for the fractional knapsack problem. For the time complexity, we're creating an array of n indexes, it costs O of n. Then we're sorting n items, which costs O of n log n. Then we're traversing them while doing O of 1 operations, which costs O of n. We get a time complexity of O of n log n for this solution, where n is the number of items. I hope that you understood the solution. If you want to support the channel, you can like and subscribe to the channel, or you can buy one of our courses. See you in the next video where we will discuss another variant of the knapsack problem.